Um, it is the most beautiful day outside. And I hope that you are out in the sunshine and in the garden or walking around town or um, doing whatever makes your heart sing today. I have snuck down to the studio for a little bit of quiet um, and selfishly <laughs> am going to put um, this practice that I come to over and over and over again when my back hurts. It's a Jason Crandall practice to release lower back tension and that's what we're going to do today um, and it's because it's the practice that my body desperately needs. So if you have been gardening. <laughs> Um, or walking miles or just woke up with that kind of like twinge in your low back, um, gather up. What do you need? You need a strap um, or something that you can use as a strap. You need um, a couple of blocks or books or something that you can lift yourself up on to support. Um, I think that's all. So uh, we are going to keep our fingers crossed that Ben doesn't make me laugh. He's on the other side of the, uh, on the other side of the phone right there to hit all the buttons. And, um, and we'll see, we'll see if we can do this today. Um, I'm happy to see you all, really happy. So grab onto your strap and lower yourself down onto your mat. Um, and just take a couple of minutes to breathe. You know, like five big breaths, even if it's one of those days when your breath has to get whooshed out of your lungs through your mouth, try that, see what fits today. Um, lower yourself down. Oh, make sure that strap is at the end of your fingertips. Come all the way down. Lift your hair out of the way. Lift your hips back up. Let them settle back. Imagine that you can attach yourself through your sacrum to your mat. Um, if your low back is tender like mine is currently, then keep your knees bent. Um, a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of TLC. If your low back feels free and easy, and this just seems like a fun practice today, stretch those legs out. Um, land on the back of your heels, let your feet flop out, um, and just stop. Arms open wide-ish, somewhere between your shoulders and your hips. Palms open to the sky, and again, look for those five easy breaths. Just, just bringing ourselves into our mat. Let everything go that's happening around us. This is just, this is time. This is time for us to move and to breathe and to connect with ourselves and remind ourselves Oh gosh, how lucky we are that we got to wake up this morning and can still move around free and easy. So five full even breaths. Think about an inhalation that lands at your belly button, moves into your rib cage, moves all the way to the top of your chest. Feel your chest rise and expand. Maybe the first couple of breaths are a sigh to exhale. <laughs> getting rid of some of that stuff from your day. Maybe it's nice and smooth exhalation, releasing that breath from the top down. Figure out what works and learn that this is your practice above all else. So you do what you can, you do what feels great, you set the rest aside. Maybe you land your hands on your belly and your chest so you can feel that breath move through your body. Think of it being like a wave. Being as present as we can possibly be right now. Maybe we even take time. Gosh, I haven't done this in a while. Maybe we even take time to set an intention for our practice this morning. Think of words that encourage you, that inspire you. Think of words that have kind of maybe been rolling around your heart or your head this morning and just now you've realized what they are. If an intention seems like a good idea and there isn't words that are landing with you, you can join in with the intention of grace and gratitude. It's the one that serves me. It serves me when nothing else sits right, and that sure does. So, finding our name. 
nice smooth breath, a nice full and even breath. Let's draw knees in toward our bellies. Start to rock a little bit from side to side. Hang out the places that feel really good when you land on them. Draw back to center. Let's land our hands at the tops of our knees. Draw our knees as tight in toward our belly as we can, keeping our knees and ankles tucked just together. And then let your knees slide out wide. Draw big circles with knees landing in opposite directions. Circle around the length of your arms. Meet again at the midline. Draw all the way back in the bellies. A couple of those big round circles. Again, hanging out the places that feel really good when you land in them. Finding our own pace this morning. Remembering the best thing about yoga on a video is that you can actually reach up and hit the pause button. So if this feels really good, hang out there for a while. I'll be here when you get back, I promise. Next time your knees land in at your belly, we're gonna send a few of those circles in the opposite direction. So knees together, moving down the midline, the length of our arms, let them fall away, circle around back. Next time you use land back at your belly, hug them in as tight as you can, maybe we run our hands down our shins. Maybe we lift our nose up into that space between our knees. Maybe we move our hands, make ourselves into the tiniest little ball. Let ourselves land back on our mat. Keep that right knee tucked all the way in. Bring that left foot down to the floor. And we're going to grab onto that strap. Hand to big toe pose. Stretch, 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 stretch up toward the sky. Sole of our foot is pointed toward the ceiling like we could leave our footprint up there. We've got one end of the strap in each hand. We're starting to add a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of tension in. Starting to draw our toes into that space above our nose. Saying hello to hamstrings. Again, thinking about anchoring through the back of our hip at the same time as we are drawing our toes toward the wall behind us. Couple of breaths. And we're going to shift both ends of the strap into our right hand. And we're going to stretch that left arm out at shoulder height. And if we have lots of room in our low back, think about stretching that left leg out. If you get it out there and it's not a good fit, we just bring our foot back to the floor. Turn our right toes out just slightly and start to let that right leg drop out. So we're going to pay attention to our left hip here. We're only dropping that right leg out as far as we can, keeping that left hip glued to the floor. Your bum starts to lift in order to find open on the right side. Right leg draws back in. Anchor through the left. Just hang out in your space. You've got a couple of breaths here. We might even have enough room to add a little bit more tension back in. So think about drawing toes toward the wall behind you. Still breathing. We're going to inhale, draw that right leg all the way back to center and we're going to stop and take time to switch both ends of the strap into our left hand. This time right arm comes out at shoulder height and we're going to stretch that left leg out. We just got to get out of the way for a couple of minutes. Stretch it all the way out and we're just going to start by paying attention to that right hip. Make sure it's anchored on the floor and just bring that right foot to the left as far as you can without your right hip lifting. So think about being able to stretch. Imagine as a rubber band runs from the outside edge of your right hip to the outside edge of your right knee. And we're just looking to very gently, very, very easily stretch that elastic band. And 
And then with your next exhalation, let that right leg drop as far to the left as it would like to go. Could be a little bit, could be a lot, wherever you can feel a tangible stretch. Catch your breath. We're gonna draw that right leg all the way back to center. We are going to bring that left foot back to the floor and we are gonna release that right ankle to the top side of our left knee. Don't let that strap get too far away. So we're gonna to start to draw our knees in toward our belly. So we've got lots of options for pigeon pose. Now, my favorite option at this moment is to use that strap to wrap around the back of our left thigh, just tucked in behind your knee. Extra long arms, not a bad thing. Give yourself a little bit more space to draw your knees in. This keeps our shoulders and neck relaxed. We're not building tension in any part of our body that we are not trying to build tension in. Gives us a little bit of freedom. Maybe we even take both ends of the strap in our left hand and that right hand comes in and just gently presses our right knee away. Nicely done. Release that left foot down to the floor. Our right foot's gonna come down beside it. We're gonna step that strap aside just till we get to the other side. And we are gonna pick up our hips and move them over to the right side of our mat. Walk our feet to the right as well. Draw knees in toward our belly. And then let both knees drop to the left. So we'd like a twist where hips are stacked over hips, knees are tucked together, ankles are tucked together and our hips are pointed up toward the sky and our shoulders are nice and wide. If you find that right, nope, oh yeah, no, it's my right arm. If you find that right shoulder is being pulled up off the floor in order to find that twist, take that right hand toward the wall behind you. We just got a couple of breaths right here. Nicely done. Draw those knees back in towards your belly. Roll yourself back onto your back. Feet come down to the floor. We're going to center ourselves back on our mat. Shoulders in line with hips, in line with heels. We're going to draw knees back in toward our belly. I'm going to rock a little bit from side to side. And we're going to start that whole sequence on the opposite side. So let's keep that left knee tucked in toward our belly. Let's bring that right foot down to the floor, remembering that we always have the option to stretch that leg that isn't in the strap or isn't tucked in toward our belly. It can stretch out or stay knee bent, foot planted. Absolutely Yogi's choice. We're gonna grab onto that strap, wrap it around the sole of our left foot, extend that left leg up toward the sky. One end in each hand. Again, thinking about anchoring the back of our left hip to the floor as we draw our toes toward the wall behind us. Shift both ends of that strap into our left hand, right arm out, left toes angled out just enough. We're going to start to let that left leg drop out to the side, keeping, keeping our attention on our right hip. Make sure it's glued to the floor. Maybe we have room to add tension into that strap. Nice. We're going to inhale, draw all the way back up. Take time to shift both ends of the strap into our right hand. Stretch that right leg out, get it out of the way. And again, think about anchoring that left hip and starting to draw our left foot just as far to the right as we can with that left hip anchored. Remember that elastic band? We're just looking for a little bit of space. Stretch that left arm out. We're going to let that left leg drop as far to the right as it would like to go.
Maybe it's a little twist, maybe it's a big twist, maybe it's somewhere in between, find your, I don't know. Do you look for an edge here? Do you look for something that makes you concentrate in your breath? Do you just look for that big juicy stretch where it feels like you've kind of <laughs> got your life together all of a sudden? Drawing all the way back to center. We're gonna bring that right foot back to the floor, release our left ankle to the top side of our right knee. Don't let that guy get too far away. We're going to start to draw our knees in toward our chest. I'm going to use my handy dandy strap tucked in behind my right knee. Arms just a little bit longer today. Feels really, really good through my hips. Check in with your breath. Notice where it's gone. Check in with your attention. Draw it back in. Nicely done. Let's release that right foot down to the floor. Left foot comes down beside it. We're going to set that guy aside. I think we're going to it for a little while. We're going to pick up our hips, shift them over to the left side of our mat, walk our feet over as well, draw our knees in toward our belly, and then as a unit, knees drop together to the right. Again, ankles together, knees together, hips stacked so that they're up toward the sky. And this is where we start to stretch arms out. Maybe we've got a nice long, sorry, nice wide stretch here. Maybe that left shoulder is telling you it needs a little bit of attention and we take that left arm toward the wall behind you. Tucking these back in toward our bellies. Let's roll all the way back. Nice. Feet come down, we're going to center ourselves back on our mat. Beautiful. And we're going to grab onto whatever you're using for a block, whether it's a block or whether it's a book or whether it's, I don't know, something you stole from your kids. We're going to bring that block in between your thighs. And you're going to keep your feet about hips distance apart. You might even think about picking up your toes, spreading them out, landing them back on your mat. And you're going to squeeze that block like it's trying to get away. Hmm. Remember your arms down the length of your sides, palms facing down. And we are going to start to peel the back of our head, the back of our shoulders off the floor and start to reach our hands down toward our heels. A couple of breaths. Nicely done, shoulders relax back, head relaxes back, take a breath. And we get to find that kind of same core engagement, arms reaching down, or if we'd like, we could start to float the soles of our feet just above the floor. And maybe we add in that stretching down, a couple of breaths, wherever you are inside of this. Gaze at the top of our knees. We're still breathing. Feet come down, shoulders down, head down. And we set that block aside. We're going to move. Oh gosh, I think we're going onto our hands and knees. I hope I have my paper behind me so I kind of remember where we're going here. <laughs> oh yeah, here we are. Come onto your hands and knees, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. If um, wrists are tender, come down onto elbows, and whenever you are ready, curl those toes under, shift hips back and up, and wiggle your way into your very favorite down dog. So by very favorite, I'm thinking about all of our options here. So maybe knees are really, really, really bent because <laughs> gardening is hard on your back. Maybe we lift up on our toes, take one heel down and then the other. Maybe we've got some wiggles here. A couple more breaths. And then whenever you're ready, 
drop back down onto your hands and knees. <laughs> and drop onto your elbows. Elbows are shoulders width apart. Palms can be flat, they can be hands interlaced, whatever fits. Find a couple of rounds of cat and cow here. Same movement, different perspective. As you come all the way back, we are going to step back into a forearm plank. One of my favorites. So, shoulders higher than hips, higher than heels. Option to bring your knees down, knee down forearm plank. Just as good. Keep your gaze about your fingertips just so we keep a long line through the back of our neck. We've got a couple more breaths. And then we're going to let our hips drop down to the mat and find a sphinx pose, a nice deep back bend. Now, again, if your back is tender, take time to find your heels just a little bit wider than your hips. If sphinx pose is extremely uncomfortable, drop your hands under your shoulders, let your nose drop, find a breath, and then inhale up into a nice easy Gosh, you know the name of it. You know the name of it better than I do. Cobra. Oh, Cobra. Ben says it's Cobra Pose. Oh, what a good kid. Whatever level of back bend that you find works and feels really good is where you're going to land here. So we've got another breath. Good gravy. So if you are up here in Sphinx Pose, we're going to drop hands under shoulders. We are going to press ourselves up onto our hands and knees, and we're going to find child's pose, hips toward heels. Oh, yeah. You might take your knees wide to tuck your belly in. You might have elbows under shoulders, so you can really let your hips sink back. You might hate child's pose, and instead you're in a puppy dog stretch, so think about hips over knees. Arms stretched out. And we're going to lift back up into tabletop. So let's find cat pose. Let's thinking, uh, think, let's think about tucking our tailbone under. Reach through the back of your shoulders, let your head drop. Let your hips start to curl up toward the sky. Let your belly soften toward the floor. Let your nose lift. There you go. Okay, come on all the way back into that neutral. And we are going to step our right foot all the way to the top of our mat. Or step it up in between your hands. Now, I brought in blocks, again, whatever you're using for blocks, because again, I want my arms a little bit longer here because I want this to be about um, my hips and not so much about balance. So that's why I want a little bit of support here. So wiggle yourself forward so you've got right knee over right ankle, and you're gonna let yourself sink into that lunge. a couple of breaths. If you have lots of balance here and you'd like to challenge yourself, absolutely lift yourself up. Finding extra padding underneath of that left knee if it makes life easier. And from here we are going to curl our toes under. Lift ourselves up into a high lunge. So start to lift yourself up. We are going to play with balance here. And if you have any inclination to find a twist inside of this practice, hands at heart center. We're taking that left knee toward the outside of our, nope, our left elbow. 
to the outside of our right knee and finding a twist. If the twist isn't something that makes your heart sing, you might take arms wide here or even hands in behind hips. Lifting up, hands down, left knee down, tuck that right knee back under, that long slow cat pose, reaching, rounding our back, inhale to lift, belly softens. All the way back to neutral, we're stepping that left foot up in between our hands. Set yourself up for a low lunge with support. Knee over ankle. See if you can soften to the front of that right hip a little bit. Maybe we stay here, maybe we lift ourselves up. We're going to curl those right toes under. <laughs> We're going to lift ourselves up into a high lunge, so landing on the ball of that right foot. Play with balance here. Lift. <laughs> Embrace the shape. We can stay lifted up here. We can take hands in the heart center, finding a twist with right elbow. Or falling over, we could do that too. <laughs> the power of suggestion, that is clapping. We could stay lifted, because clearly a twist on that side is not part of my practice today. Open wide, tuck hands in behind hips. <laughs> Beautiful, reach up. Exhale down, right knee down, left knee down. Sink yourself into your favorite version of child's pose. Beautifully done. So, if you're still looking for a finishing pose, um, you're probably ready to let yourself land in pigeon pose, that weight-bearing pigeon pose where we start on hands and knees and tuck under. Again, if weight-bearing pigeon pose isn't part of your practice, think about thread the needle on our backs. Um, beautiful, thank you. Um, set yourself up for a nice long shavasana, tuck yourself in. Find music or silence or whatever it is that keeps your breath moving. Um, and I'll see you soon.